In chapter 6, we're going to tackle discrete probability distributions. Now, before we get into all of that, we want to take a moment and remind ourselves how to distinguish between discrete and continuous random variables, in this case, as opposed to data, which we learned about in section 1.1. So it's very much the same idea. Um, discrete random variables are random variables that have finite or countable number of values. Countable means you literally can count them doesn't mean that it's not infinite. You can have infinite and still be countable. For example, the integers are infinite but countable. But the important thing is that you can count them. In general, discrete tends not to have decimal places. Right? There are some exceptions to that, such as shoe size and um, your grade in a class. But besides from those couple examples, it tends not to have decimal places. Continuous, on the other hand, um, can take on infinitely many values in an interval. In other words, it's measured and generally has decimal places. Of course, we learned those definitions back in Chapter 1 when it was having to do with data. The difference here is that this is a random variable. So this is some numerical measure of the outcome of a probability experiment. So it's a future potential data, <laughs> but it doesn't actually exist because it's in the future. All right, so let me write down those couple notes. All right, I just wrote that up. So discrete variables are counted. Um, they tend not to have decimals. Again, it's a tendency. There's not a, it's not a hard rule, um, but it tends not to have decimals. Um, and then continuous variables are measured, and they tend to have lots of decimals. And the thing about continuous variables is that they could always get more decimals if we just have better tools to measure it with. All right, so why does this matter? Well, because we're going to <laughs> look at them in different chapters. So discrete probability distributions are really chapters 5 and 6, um, especially chapter 6, of course. But that's what we were working with in chapter 5 as well. Everything was counted. right? We could figure out the probabilities by counting the cards in the deck, that kind of thing. Whereas continuous is what we're going to be working with from chapter 7 onward. So once we hit chapter 7, everything will be continuous and won't be discrete anymore. All right, so let's look at some examples and determine whether they are discrete or continuous. The, the first thing is the number that comes up on a 20-sided die. When, as you can see, the 4 facing up is a whole number, no decimals. I can count the number of outcomes, right? There's a finite limited supply of them, and they have no decimal places. So that is definitely discrete. The height of an NBA player on a team is continuous. Now, that doesn't mean that he's getting taller or shorter or anything like that. What it means is I could get more decimal places of accuracy if I just have a better measuring tape. Right? Suppose I used a laser measuring system instead of a tape measure. That would be more accurate and I could get more decimal places. Perhaps he's not you know, 7 feet 6 inches, he's 7 feet 6.23456 inches. Similarly, the weight of a randomly chosen backpack is continuous. Not because it's growing or shrinking, but because I can get more decimal places if I just have a better scale. The number of songs on my smartphone is discrete or in my Spotify playlist <laughs> it's discrete it doesn't have to be finite but it is discrete you can count the number of songs whereas the length of time would be continuous because I can get more decimal places on that time count if I just have a better clock right a better stopwatch time so I'll make a note here stopwatch time which is the time it takes to do an activity, to race a race, to swim a mile, to do, um, to play this song, is always continuous. Um, also note, money, in terms of dollars and cents, is technically discrete, but we'll treat it like it's continuous a lot because it has two decimal places. And it's very rare for us to have a discrete thing with two decimal places. I mean, money tends not to have decimals, right? So um, money is treated as if it's continuous. Um, it's technically not because it's cut off at the penny, at the hundredth decimal place, but that's a lot of decimals, so it's treated as continuous. Shoe size, so if we think, you know, 
nine, nine and a half. This would be American shoe size. Um, European shoe sizes don't have the halves and so on. And your grade in a class, right? Your grade in a class is 0 0.0, 0 0.5, um, 1.0, 1.5, etc. dot, 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 are discrete. Even though they have a decimal place on there, it's a very limited decimal place, and we can still count the number of outcomes. And so since we can count the number of outcomes, that is uh, discrete.